Hi, my name is Gail Fordman and I am the author of Frankie and Bug, a forthcoming middle grade novel that's coming out in October. And before I read to you from it, I have a question for you. Do you think life is fair? Do you think it's just? Do you know the difference between those two things? If the answer is, I have no idea the difference, well, you have a lot in common with Bug, who is the main character of Frankie and Bug. One of the things Bug's mama always tells her is that life isn't fair and the most you can hope for is that it's just. And Bug doesn't really know what that means, but over the course of this one summer, after her upstairs neighbor's nephew Frankie comes out to visit, she starts to understand the difference and what it means for each of us to make sure that the world is more just. So I'm gonna to read to you from the book, but I'm gonna start in chapter two, which is a chapter called Frankie. And it's when Frankie arrives. And I just wanna set it up for you so you know what's been going on. It's the summer of 1987, and Bug has just learned that as far as she's concerned, summer is being canceled because her older brother, Danny, who now wants to go by Daniel, and who used to take her to the beach every summer, which is her favorite thing, no longer wants to babysit her. And so now she's stuck um, with this neighbor's nephew who's coming out to visit, you know, to salvage Bug summer, and she's not too happy about it. And so that is where we begin our story. Chapter two, Frankie. His name was Frankie. He was 11 years old and from Ohio. That was all anyone would tell Bug. Not if he liked the beach or knew how to roller skate or ate fish and chips with tartar sauce like Danny did or vinegar and salt like Bug did. You'll find out soon enough, Mama said when Bug peppered her with questions. This annoyed Bug. Frankie was being brought out here for her. Didn't she have the right to know these things? Philip was taking the day off from work to pick Frankie up from the airport, and he invited Bug to join him. I suppose I'll go, she said, as if she hadn't spent the first few days of summer vacation bored out of her skull, commuting from their apartment to Hedvig's to the tetherball courts at the elementary school on the corner, which, according to the triangle ma Mama had drawn, was where she was allowed to go alone. But Bug refused to show any enthusiasm about this Frankie, because once again, no one had asked her what she thought. Bug met Philip at his parking spot in the alley behind their building. He was already cranking down the top to his car, a VW Rabbit convertible, which Philip called the Cabriolet, because he knew that Bug always wanted the top down, even in winter, when it was so freezing, Philip had to blast the heater to keep Bug's teeth from chattering. He opened the glove box and pulled out the purple silk scarf he kept in there special for her, tying it under her chin. You look just like Grace Kelly, he said, same as always. Even though Bug knew from old movies that Grace Kelly had straight blonde hair and porcelain skin and Bug had frizzy brown hair and what Mama called olive skin, which confused Bug because weren't olives green? If she was half excited to meet Frankie, Bug was whole excited to pick him up at the airport. Though they lived less than 10 miles from LAX, Bug had never been inside it. She'd never been on a plane, never gone to the airport to greet anyone because the only person who ever visited them was Aunt Terry, and she always took the Greyhound bus down from Visalia. Airplanes fascinated Bug. She loved watching the jets take off over the Pacific Ocean. Danny had taught her how to follow the trajectory. If they turned around, Danny said they were going to Chicago or maybe New York or maybe England. But if they carried on straight over the ocean, that meant they were going to Hawaii or even all the way across to Japan or Vietnam, which was where Beyond was from. Though she hadn't come here on a plane, but on a boat. Would you like to choose the music, Beatrice? Philip asked. That was another thing about Philip. He did not believe in shortening names. He called Mama Colleen, never Co, as other people did. He'd always called Danny Daniel, and he got grumpy if people called him Phil. I am not a verb, he once told Bug, and you, my dear, are not an insect. Danny would probably set the dial to 106.7 KROQ, but Bug had seen Philip make the same face to Oingo Boingo that Mama did when she balanced the checkbook. The classical station's okay with me. Philip loved classical music. Whenever he listened in the car, he held the steering wheel with one hand and waved the other like he was conducting. Buck wondered if he did that when he gave piano lessons to his students, some of whom she'd heard him tell Mama were so bad they made his ears bleed. When the song ended, the announcer cut in. We have breaking news. Investigators are now saying that the bludgeoning of an Arcadia woman in her home last night follows a similar pattern of several Southland nighttime home invasion murders that police are now attributing to a serial killer they're calling the Midnight Marauder. Marauder, Bug repeated. 
Let's change the station, shall we? Philip said, moving the dial to KROQ. The DJs were talking too, not about serial killers, but the upcoming July 4th holiday. What do you get America for its 212th birthday? One, gin at, one DJ asked. Gin? It's 211, you numbnuts, the other DJ said. It's 1987 now. Is it? asked DJ number one. I guess my last July 4th party was a little too wild. Philip turned the radio off. The car crested above the wetlands of Playa del Rey. The ocean twinkled in the distance. Even from here, Bug could smell the briny scent, her favorite perfume. She missed the beach with a deep ache and wondered if Mama would take her and Frankie later. But then she remembered the announcement on the news about the midnight, whatever his name was. Mama's job with the mayor was in the press office. And when there were big stories, she had to work extra. Where's Arcadia? She asked Philip. Far away, Beatrice. Almost another city, don't worry. Is it run by the mayor? Bug wanted to know. I'm not sure, why do you ask? Because if it's run by the mayor, Mama will have to work late and won't take me and Frankie to the beach. Philip's mustache twitched upward as it did before he laughed, though Bug wasn't sure what was so funny. We're almost there, he said, as the road ran parallel to a runway. Overhead, a plane rumbled so close it made the car shake. The air filled with a strange but not unpleasant smell that Philip said was jet fuel. Have you ever been on a plane, Bug asked? Of course. How old were you the first time? Philip paused to think. I suppose that would be when I came out here from Ohio. I would have been 24. When was that? Bug asked. Philip gave her a quick glance as if to say, nice try. That was another thing about Philip. Though Danny and Bug had known him almost their entire lives, though they had a key to his apartment, much about him remained a mystery. Like his age, for one, Bug had no idea how old he was. They never celebrated his birthday, even though he baked elaborate cakes for theirs with their ages decorated and frosting, except for Hedvig, who said that her age, she didn't need it advertised. So Philip made up different ages for her each birthday. Last time she was 19. I remember landing, Philip said, and seeing the ocean for the first time. Because there's no ocean in Ohio, Bug said, eager to show off her geography skills. Right, but we have the Great Lakes, which look like oceans a little, because you can't see to the other side and they have waves, but there's nothing that compares to the Pacific. On that note, Bug was in complete agreement. Frankie's flight was late, so Bug and Philip wandered the airport, looking at the departure boards to see all the places the planes went. Chicago and San Francisco and Atlanta, even Mexico City. Further down from Mexico City was El Salvador, which was where Bug's father was from. When Frankie's plane pulled into the gate, they waited for all the other passengers to get off before a stewardess finally came off with Frankie. At 11, Frankie was a year older than Bug, but he looked younger, skinny with knobby knees full of scabs, big ears sticking out of a short, choppy haircut that Bug recognized as a kitchen cut. Philip waved, Frankie walked over and they shook hands and then hugged. Bug felt a sting of jealousy. Philip might bake her cakes for her birthday and keep a Grace Kelly scarf in his car for her, but she couldn't remember a time when he'd hugged her. Welcome to California, Frankie, Philip said. Thank you, it's nice to meet you, Frankie said solemnly. Wait, you never even met, Bug asked. I have not had the pleasure of meeting this handsome young man, Philip said. Frankie, this is Beatrice. Beatrice, this is Frankie. You could call me Bug, everyone else does. But then she had a thought. Is Frankie short for something? Because Philip doesn't like shortening names. Frankie looked at Philip with wide, unblinking eyes. Philip smiled and put a hand on his shoulder. I'm lengthening Frankie's name as Frankie's is long for Frank. Philip said firmly, let's go collect your bag, shall we? This is all I brought, Frankie said, lifting his backpack. It was hardly bigger than Bug's school bag. This for the entire summer? You needed multiple bathing suits, plus shorts for daytime and jeans when it got cold at night. I hope you brought more than one bathing suit, Bug said. After a brief pause, Frankie replied, I didn't bring any bathing suits. But how are we supposed to go to the beach if you don't have a bathing suit? Frankie looked confused. Bug was dismayed. Surely someone must have told him that the point of his coming out to Venice for the summer was to keep her company so she could go to the beach and not be alone. I don't like the beach, Frankie said. Bug couldn't believe her ears. But you've never been to our beach, she countered. The Pacific Ocean is nothing like your stupid lakes. Beatrice, Philip said mildly. He turned to Frankie. If that's all you have, we can head home. 
He placed an arm around Frankie's shoulder and the two of them started walking through the terminal like they'd totally forgotten Bug existed. She counted to herself, wondering how many seconds before they realized she wasn't alongside them. She got to six when Philip finally swung around. Beatrice, coming? You know we have a serial killer, right? Bug announced as they rode the escalator down past the Welcome to Los Angeles sign. He just killed again, we heard it on the radio. Beatrice, Philip said, an edge of warning in his voice. He bludgeoned someone to death, Bug continued, even though she wasn't sure what bludgeon meant. That's enough, Beatrice, Philip said. Let's give Frankie some time to settle in before we scare the bejesus out of him. Scaring the bejesus out of him was exactly the point. But Frankie didn't look scared. He just looked interested, which wasn't the point. I'll add it to my map, he said. What map, Bug asked. Where all the Midnight Marauder attacks have happened. You know about the Midnight Marauder? Yeah, it's been on the news. My dad didn't want me to come, but my mom said a deal was a deal. And anyhow, I have my map to keep track of all the places he struck. Frankie tapped his backpack. You brought a map, Bug asked, with you? Well, yeah, Frankie replied. Like, what kind of dummy wouldn't bring a serial killer map when traveling to the place where a serial killer was on the loose? He said it like, duh, which made Bug feel dumb and then cross. And that was when it hit her. This Frankie, who'd been sent here to redeem her summer, was going to ruin it even more. <laughs>